What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today's video is going to be all about Pidgeotto control. I'm going to explain what is in the deck and how it functions and then of course how are we supposed to beat Pidgeotto control. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good deck in the upcoming standard format by the looks of it. It's got a couple new tools but the deck was already very very good and it was the runner up of a few different major tournaments. So we're going to get into this and start out with what is Pidgeotto Control. Well, Pidgeotto Control is a control deck, and it plans to put the opponent into a handlock, and then you keep them in this handlock until they're decked out. I'll explain the process and exactly how you lock the hand in just a bit. Uh, Pidgeotto Control, you're usually not taking prizes. You don't really do damage with this deck. Uh, you're trying to play from behind the whole time. So uh, you don't really take prizes and you want your opponent to knock things out and take prizes themselves. So you can play things like Lieutenant Surge's strategy to play more supporter cards and play uh, Reset Stamp to put your opponent down to lower hand sizes. Belelba and Bryson Man. This is a new supporter card that I'll talk about in a little bit. It came out in the newest set, Cosmic Eclipse, and I think it's going to be uh, very important for Pidgeotto Control, and especially in Best of One for League Cup and League Challenges. Pidgeotto Control has very long games, but I think Belelba and Bryson Man can speed up those games fast enough that maybe this can even be played in Best of One formats. So the main Pokemon of the deck, we're going to be looking at Aranguru, Pidgeotto, and Articuno GX. Aranguru, uh, we're using the resource management attack, and that's the main that's the main attack of the deck. <clears throat> it continuously brings back important disruption cards, uh, your surge, your Mars, your chip chip ice axe, your reset stamps, energies, anything you need to not deck out while you're controlling your opponent. Uh, Pidgeotto is the draw engine of the deck. So it's called Pidgeotto Control, but Pidgeotto is not doing the controlling itself. Uh, it uses the ability Airmail once during your turn before you attack. You may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, and put the other card on the bottom of your deck. And you want to get as many Pidgeottos out as you can to start drawing through your deck. So you can get to a point where you have like a zero card or close to zero card deck and you're only drawing the cards you want via resource management the turn before and then air mailing into them on your turn. Articuno GX, uh, we're using it for its Cold Crush GX attack. Uh, it reads discard all energy from both active Pokemon. And so this is there to take care of a threat that your opponent has set up. Maybe like a Pikaram with a lot of energy, a Rushizard with a lot of energy. You get the idea. It's there to just uh, immobilize a threat with a lot of energy so you can get back to just locking your opponent. The trainer cards that are going to be important in this deck include Lieutenant Surge's Strategy, Reset Stamp, Mars, and Chip Chip Ice Axe. There are some others, but these uh, are the bread and butter of your controlling strategy. So Lieutenant Surge essentially allows you to play an extra supporter card during your turn as long as you are behind in prize cards. It reads you can play this card only if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. During this turn, you can play three supporter cards. So Surge counts as one of those supporter cards, and then you can play two more. Uh, reset stamp is very crucial for the deck since it allows you to take hits and give up prize cards you just sit there and let your opponent knock out your jirachis or your Gurus, and then you reset stamp them when they get down to two or one prize cards or sometimes even three if you can use jesse and james and mars uh, mars is frequently one or both of the supporters you're going to use with after you use your lieutenant surge's strategy uh, Mars is very good because it allows you to draw into more cards if you need to, like the next Mars or the Chip Chip or something for next turn. And it also discards a card from your opponent's hand. Chip Chip Ice Axe, it allows you to look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and you pick which one stays there and the others are shuffled back in. So you can essentially just give your opponent a dead draw for next turn after getting rid of their hand. So... This lock that we're trying to establish, the combo is reset stamp them down to two cards if they have two prizes, so we'll stamp them down to two. We play Surge, 
Then we play Mars, draw two cards, discard one from their hand. Mars, draw two cards, discard one from their hand, putting them at a zero card hand. And then use Chip Chip Ice Axe to set the top card of their deck to our choosing. So we're leaving them with a zero card hand. And the top card of their deck is something that we have given them that is hopefully not very good. As long as one out of three of those cards from Chip Chip aren't good, then uh, we're fine. So we stamp Surge, Mars, Mars, Chip Chip, Ice Axe, and then we resource management to put uh, the Chip Chip back to the bottom of our deck. Uh, sometimes the Mars, uh, maybe a Pal Pad instead of the Mars. Uh, we can now use Belelba and Bryson Man as well. And we're just going to always want to Chip Chip, Ice Axe them to make sure they're getting a card that they cannot use. So the win condition, uh, the win condition prior to Cosmic Eclipse was just uh, Stamp Surge, Mars, Mars, Chip Chip, and then every few turns you stamp them again to Mars, Mars, two cards out of their hand, essentially milling cards out of their deck since you're forcing them to draw into cards and then discarding them. Uh, but now we have Belelba and Bryson Man, which discards the top three cards from each player's deck. Uh, you can just Surge and then Mars to a zero card deck discard the three from each player's deck but you have a zero card deck so it doesn't hurt you and then just resource manage again and then just keep repeating as long as you're also chip chip ice axing your opponent keeping them at a dead top deck and making sure that they can't do anything with the combination of cards that you are giving them uh in this succession the successive turns with chip chip of course there are ways to beat birds uh, but Belobo really speeds up the win condition that Pidgeotto Control has. So, of course, how do we beat Pidgeotto Control? Uh, I have three strategies here that I'll explain briefly. So the first is having card draw. So the, the way that Pidgeotto Control wins is that they put their opponent down to the zero card hand and give them a, a dead draw for the next turn. If you have a card on your board that lets you draw cards like Pidgeotto's Airmail or Zebstrika Sprint which is discard your hand and draw four cards then they cannot just set you to zero cards and give you a dead card because you can use one of these abilities next turn to just draw cards so uh, putting in a Zebstrika line or a Pidgeotto line into a deck that can reliably establish those onto the board that is a Pidgeotto counter in itself since the Stamp, Surge, Mars, Mars, Chip, Chip. Okay, I, I'm down to a zero card hand and I draw a dead card. Well, I can just sprint this and draw four more cards. Probably hit something I can use, an energy, a switch, a supporter, uh, to just switch out my Pokemon or attach an energy or supporter into uh, the Pokemon I need to attack, whatever it is. And airmail, usually you'll need more than one Pidgeotto, but even just one Pidgeotto, it's probably not going to get you there every single time they stamp you down to zero, stamp Mars Mars, and then chip chip you to a dead hand because you only get to look at the next two. But eventually the Pidgeotto will help you. Um, I've been running a 2-2 Pidgeotto line in my Spirit Tomb list since that already runs Elm's method and it can search out the Pidgeotto nicely and you can use that draw support. I'm trying Zepstrika in my uh, Abilities Zard deck and a couple others. Uh, so the card draw is a pretty basic way to counter birds. Next is just speed. So just running through the Pidgeotto control player before they can get established and lock you and then keep the lock. Because of course, if they have a 20 card deck and they do the stamp, surge, Mars, Mars, chip, chip. Let's say after that, the Mars, Mars, they're at a uh, 16 card deck and then they resource manage the cards they need. They're at a 19 card deck. Well, they cannot draw through that entire deck to get the exact cards they need again for the next turn and the next turn and the next turn. Uh, so they want to get down to a like zero to three, five ish card deck. Zero is like zero to three is like the sweet spot. Um, so if you can take prizes quick enough that they cannot thin their deck down, maybe they don't get three to four Pidgeotos out turn two. Maybe you're just faster than them with something like Pika Rum that can take multiple prizes with Tag Bolt, or Arceus Dialga Palkia that takes multiple prize cards 
for each knockout after using the GX attack. So uh, ADP can win versus birds on turn four. If they go uh, second, turn one, altered creation, then turns two, three, and four, just take a knockout, uh, That that's game. And Pidgeotto may not be able to establish their board and establish the lock and keep it going um, in the small window of opportunity they get against these powerful aggro decks. Lastly is nonlinear strategies. So by that, I mean you're not just taking one prize card at a time or two prize cards at a time and it's not really set in stone when you're taking your prizes um espion deoxys's gx attack cross division for three energy puts 10 damage counters however you like on the opponent's board and for six energy it puts 20 damage counters however you like on the opponent's board so if you're playing a malamar deck you can set things up with mew with distortion doors and then just take multiple prize cards at once with cross division. The reason that is good is because uh, the Pidgeotto player wants you to be at preferably two or one prize cards when they establish the lock. But because of Jesse and James, they could arguably do it at uh, three cards, maybe even four in a very, very niche scenario. But it's usually at two prize cards when the lock is happening. But like I said, it can happen at three. So if you can keep yourself at four prize cards or above and then just knock multiple things out or even win the game from four prizes to zero prizes, uh, that would be what I consider a nonlinear strategy. And uh, Volcarona GX kind of offers the same sort of thing. Um, it's a its ability flaming shot is once a turn you can discard a fire energy card from your hand to put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, the problem with this is that uh, if the opponent's playing Power Plant, with which I believe all Pidgeotto control decks do play Power Plant, that shuts this off. But, you know, you can play Counter Stadiums and Resetting Whole Mar Shadows and whatnot. Uh, but I think Flaming Shot is just a good example of how to take multiple prize cards in a non-linear way uh, to get around the strategy that Pidgeotto control relies on. So... Just to close out the video, I have a sample list from my friend Aaron Friedman. I actually have not been testing Pidgeotto Control myself for this format. Uh, I, I'm sure I'll get into it eventually, but I asked if anyone had a list they wouldn't mind sharing. And this is Aaron's list, so at the very least it is something you can use as a base if you wanted to start trying Pidgeotto yourself or you need something to test against, or you just wanted to see how people are building Pidgeotto right now. Um, Aaron, I, I'll, just, I'll just go over his list real quickly. I see that he's using the Victini from Cosmic Eclipse that heals 20 damage from one of your Pokemon once a turn. Uh, the Magneton, which can knock itself out and search for three supporters. And also uh, Rosa, which if something was knocked out last turn, you can search your deck for a Pokemon, an Energy, and a Trainer. And then um, Belalba Embrace a Man, of course, which helps you mill the opponent. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of archetype profile on Pidgeotto Control and also how to counter it yourself. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.